is required to meet that target. And Wills calculates a carbon footprint for the period 1st of October 2012 to the 30th of September 2013 is over 35,000 tonnes. If this doesn't change, then corporate performance targets will be met for the current financial year 2013-14 and also for the next financial year. Now, previously, Chair, members directed a carbon budget progress should be presented on a departmental level. This performance target differs from the corporate target as it only presents carbon emissions and targets for the assets that remain in the Council's portfolio. Actual emissions from the 1st of October 2012 to the 30th of September 2013 are 935 tonnes higher than those reported for the same 2011-2012 period on the 18th of February 2013. The impact of warmer weather, I'm not getting much of that tonight, but warmer weather, <laughs> just an old speech, um, projects, community asset transfers and planned sale of assets realised before the 31st of March 2014 will actually contribute to reducing the shortfall. So the carbon budget is neither financial nor statutory, but meeting the annual targets will actually reduce costs for the Council. Reductions in carbon emissions are achieved by reducing energy use, and there are financial savings that will be made from the avoided costs of energy and carbon reduction commitments, or CRC, allowances. It is Will's only method of managing CO2 emissions in order to reduce our carbon footprint and the costs that are associated with that. So as you'll see, Chair, there's four parts of the recommendation which are contained on page 139 of the Cabinet documents. Uh, I won't read them, them out because they're there, they're written on that, on that page, but I would formally recommend, Chair, that Cabinet do give uh, full approval to the four parts of the recommendation on page 139. Thanks, thanks very much for that, Brian. Can we, can we agree those recommendations? Yeah, yeah. I agree, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, item 9 has been withdrawn, so that takes us on to highways and transportation, which is the uh, report on traffic signals maintenance 2014 15 onwards. Harry. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, thanks, Tom. The current tra traffic signal maintenance contract will expire at the end of March 2014. The officers have been through a procurement exercise which used the open tender procedure to secure a new contract from April 2014 for a four-year term. The prepared bid is identified in the appendix to this report. This appendix details the evaluation of tender submissions and contains sensitive information which is exempt from public disclosure in accordance with paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12A of the Local Government Act 1972. The outcome of the tender evaluation and award of contract can be considered in the closed session for exempt item later in the Cabinet's agenda. But before I come to the uh, recommendation, can I ask members to look at page 159, 2.9.1. Uh, so it must be remembered that there's a statutory 10 day standstill period to enable unsuccessful tenders to obtain feedback on the, on the council's contract award and potentially lodge a legal challenge. The contract can only formally be awarded after this period. Okay, so it's important to say that. Anyway, having said that, a decision is required from cabinet on the contract award and cabinet is being requested to Note the outcome of the uh, procurement exercise and prove the award of the contract subject to the statutory standstill period I've just referred to set out in Appendix 1 for the maintenance, supply and installation of traffic control systems and associated equipment for a four-year period. And there's a potential at the end of those four years for a two-year extension commencing April 2014, depending on satisfactory delivery of performance. Okay, thanks for that, Harry. Um, can we agree those recommendations? I agree. Thank you very much. Thanks, Harry. Um, and that then takes us on to item agenda item 11, which is a referral from the Regeneration and Environment Policy and Performance Committee, 27th of January, uh, which is a um, an item to do with Merseyside 
fire and rescue service. Uh, we had a presentation from the uh, chief fire officer, and um, one of the recommendations is asking, is requesting the cabinet to support any lobby for additional funding for the fire and rescue service. Um, and we've seen got in the minute 30. For its worth, I think it's um, the, the government cuts to the fire service budget, budget are outrageous. Uh, I think um, you know it, it's it's just um, uh, making our, our job and keeping our population safe that much more difficult. I, I think the uh, chief fire officer, um, uh, when he did presentations to the city region cabinet, he presented what he called the, the least worst option, and I think that's absolutely right. So I have got no problem with asking cabinet to support um, a lobby for additional funding for the fire and rescue. So can we can we agree that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I think that ends the uh, public um, business. I've not been informed of any other um, any other business. Um, I think I now have to move into exemption. So can I move the relevant um, resolution to exclude press and public? Is that agreed? Yeah.